This is the story of a man named Stanley, and nobody else at all. But is that really true? After all, this is a story filled with other things, other people, other characters. This is the story of the boss and the bucket. The story of Stan Lorenz and Mariella. Yes, this is the story of many characters, but there is another. One you've been neglecting, viewers. There is a character in this building, a character who walks these halls, who remains hidden. As of the recording of this video, this character is not even mentioned on the Stanley Parable wiki page. There are breadcrumbs, they are few and far between, but it is our job to pick up the pieces and to put them together. Today, dear viewers, this is not the story of a man named Stanley. This is the story of a man named Jim. Jim will be most familiar to players of the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, which, uh, <laughs> which I just realized as I'm recording this can be abbreviated to SPUD. Do with that information what you will. Anyway, Jim will be most familiar to those entering the Stanley Parable 2 Expo Hall. As you enter the Expo Hall, if you happen to turn left, you'll be greeted with the first large exhibit. This one dedicated to the experimental button that says the player's name. Jim. Once you reach it and give it a shot, you'll discover that it actually only says the name Jim. So the narrator asks you to roleplay as Jim in order to be immersed in the fulfilling emotional payoff of having a button say your newly assigned name. Sure, the narrator is trying to cover for the shortcomings of this gag, uh, as he did with the infinite hole elsewhere in the exhibit. But Jim... Jim goes far beyond this. New to the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe is the Timekeeper, or more plainly known as the settings person in the community. Follow the Timekeeper's story by doing some certain tasks, and eventually you'll unlock the epilogue. It's here where the story of Jim is truly revealed. In dark caves, housing Stanley Parable 2 reviews, the sand around is littered with more name buttons. Now, the expo hall only featured the one button, a work in progress. And that button says Jim. But here, at the end of everything, they all say Jim. Jim, 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 Jim. Well, except for one singular button that actually says Stanley. Jim, 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 Stanley. But otherwise, all of the buttons found down here do say Jim. All this time, was not spent producing one button that could say the player's name, or a bunch of different buttons that say different names. No, no, no. All this time, from the origin of the button till now at the end of everything, that time was spent recognizing Jim. It's my belief that the Stanley button is revealed here on purpose. Stanley is a memory, perhaps even one that the narrator came to miss. But in this moment, after all this time, it's possible that maybe we, the player, are no longer Stanley. Is it possible that we could be Jim ourselves? Could the buttons finally be right? Say hello to the bucket. Perhaps you're familiar with the bucket already, or perhaps not. At the end of the day, your relationship with the bucket, simple or tangled as it might be, is irrelevant. What matters 
is what you can do with the bucket. The escape pod ending without it nets you a game restart. With it, however, and you can send the bucket off into the great beyond. You will eventually be provided a replacement bucket and the loop lives on. But what about that first bucket? Where did you send it? Where does it go? Many, many years later, it's here in the crash landed escape pod at the end of everything. Landing near the ruins of the memory zone, you can reclaim your lost friend and continue on until you meet with the timekeeper one last time. I'm not convinced, however, that this is your friend. How could Stanley send this bucket away and then be here decades or even centuries later for the reunion? After all, Stanley is not immortal. The confusion ending shows us a timeline that leads to the disappearance of the narrator and the eventual death of Stanley after the passage of time. So at the end of everything, we can't be Stanley. Maybe we're Jim, right? Hmm, no. Investigating some of the other events in the game, it actually becomes clear that the events seen here in the epilogue followed directly after the time Stanley spent in the skip button room, passing countless quantities of time until everything crumbled around him. So yes, here at the end of everything, I do believe we are playing as Stanley. So maybe we don't ever play as Jim, but he's certainly not one of the other employees, because all the employees are accounted for. They're numbered, 1 to 600, right? Hmm, no. Jim is not only an employee, but he's been an employee since the pre-Ultra Deluxe Stanley Parable, listed on the whiteboard in the meeting room, where you can still find his name today. Jim is here, but how do we find him? Let's investigate some candidates. Right off the bat, we can eliminate the other employee numbers that are listed on the whiteboards around the meeting room. Because of course, there would be no need to specify Jim if he was one of these employee numbers. However, in an office full of employees, up to 600, or possibly more, this doesn't really narrow the field a whole lot. Rather than looking through each individual employee, most of whom we have no information on, let's look at some of these special employees. Some of the employees who've made a mark on the office building, and might even have more sentience or power than the rest. Employee 432 Employee 432 is an enigma. Some speculate that they do, or perhaps once did, have the sentience or freedom that Stanley finds himself with during the events of the game. 432 only has a pencil sharpener and a lamp at their desk. Not only this, but they received an entire additional shipment of pencil sharpeners, which was delivered to the warehouse office. And they actually go on to collect this shipment over the course of the game, through the incorrect ending. Although, strangely, this package is not collected during the incorrect ending as seen in Ultra Deluxe. 432 is further mentioned in other parts of the game. A printout in the Mind Control Facility reveals that 432 is denied pencils by 431 per received instruction. As it turns out, 432 might actually be some sort of employee experiment. Whether the experiment has to do with the production the office puts out, or is one of the narrator's experiments, remains a bit unclear. Even stranger, a sort of pocket dimension houses employee 432 peer reviews, with dozens upon dozens of filing cabinets being dedicated to this process. Lastly, let's revisit the timekeeper once more, or the settings person. Devs revealed in a live stream that the timekeeper and employee 432 are actually one and the same. Uh, the settings person that you saw at the beginning uh, comes back and it is uh, the settings person is the basically revealed to be employee 432. And Wait, so who's the settings person? The, the person who set your settings at the start, like who just now told oh, you to set oh, the clock. Set yeah, the yeah, I told you to set the time. And we already had that all built in. And then 
we later on realized, oh my god, what if employee 432 has been driven so psychologically mad that they become the fabric of the universe setting things for you and is like evaporated from off of the plane. The text narrator who gives us our endless sequel numbers and grants us access to the broken test achievement is the same employee obsessed with finding pencils and sharpening them. Personally, I'm not satisfied. We know that 432 has no computer, but we're expected to believe that the computer, at the end of everything, belongs to them? I don't buy it. Either way, however, I think that an amalgamation of the timekeeper, employee 432, and the mystery employee known as Jim would probably be too much. So I think that eliminates employee 432 as being Jim's alternate identity. So, who else do we have? The so-called employee 425 comes to mind, though given the whiteboard list logic from before, I have doubts here as well. Also, can I just say that deciding the employee who always walks past office 425 is employee number 425 is kind of strange logic. Okay, anyway. Could Jim be the boss? This is also unlikely, as the boss most certainly wouldn't be pulled into a meeting with other low-tier button pushers. No offense, guys. Okay, if Jim isn't a regular employee here, maybe there's something more, a la employee 432, but a separate entity. They're a part of this world. They're acknowledged within these walls, so they can't be a narrator. But maybe they have some awareness or knowledge beyond the office. Maybe Jim created the plot of the confusion ending. Maybe he was the one who grew tired of the endless corporate drivel in the meeting room. Maybe he was simply fired, like employees 104 and 601. Or maybe, free from a number and an office, he's free to wander these halls and supervise his peers directly. Maybe he's here to watch you. There is one possible candidate left I'd like to discuss. Once again, let's revisit the bucket. In addition to remixes of the old endings, the bucket leads us to new journeys as well. In the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, it is in an old and a new ending where we can find a mysterious man watching us from afar. First, the press conference ending. Taking the elevator hidden in the boss's office by yourself reveals no clues. But bring the bucket with you and you'll catch a brief glimpse at him. Who is he? What is he doing? Why is he here watching you? And why is he only here watching you when you have the bucket? As it turns out, he might be very interested in the bucket, or at least making sure that you are, as he can also be seen behind you after the conclusion of the bucket quiz. Again, silently watching, perhaps judging. This strange man could be Jim, a man inside our office building, but freed from its shackles. Gambarata also comes to mind, another seemingly otherworldly entity tied to the bucket. Interestingly, one of the few references to Gambarata in the entire game could actually be the voice of Jim. I still haven't figured out why I see the world so differently when this bucket is in my arms. This is my golden ticket. But I have to be careful, because as soon as this gets out, there's going to be a target on my back. Even now, I don't know who might be trying to get... What's that? Who's there? Camarada. An unnamed person recording a tape contemplating the benefits of exploiting the bucket for profit is interrupted and seemingly attacked by the ethereal Gambarata. 
Gambarata, though unknowable, did leave us one clue, which throughout my research I have been unable to find any other documentation on, so I believe I'm the first to find this. At the very end of this tape, there are some strange sounds. Running those sounds through a spectrogram reveals this. Is this the Roman numeral two alluded to throughout the game? A reference to the Stanley Parable 2? Is it the two doors? A pivotal moment in Stanley's adventure, from which dozens of choices branch off. Who's to say, really? Who's to say that Jim couldn't be the man on the tape? Or perhaps Gambarata is our wannabe G-Man? Gambarata, G-Man, coincidence? Possibly. Ultra Deluxe and its new elements have certainly changed, or perhaps even corrupted, the characters of this world. Once simply a name on a board, Jim has taken over the Stanley Parable, but keeps himself hidden. I encourage you to watch closely. Stanley is no longer alone in this office. Jim is watching, waiting for us. Will you find him in time? Like. I'll give you a call if there's anything I forgot. Thanks, sweetie. 